the all-sufficient sight. When you recognise me as I am, there is no doubt in you. One who beholds me as I am and with right and true devotional recognition response is beholding the divine or reality itself as it is. Every moment of whole bodily devotional turning to me is simply that, beholding the divine as it is, moment to moment. When you rightly and truly devotionally behold me, you are in the divine self-domain, you are in the paradise of reality itself, and you have been given all the divine gifts. In the divine self-domain, there is not anything lacking. Such is the characteristic of right and true devotion to me. Right and true devotion to me is beholding that which is all-sufficient in and as my very person, as I am. Devotion is an absolization of the human sign and it is unmistakable. When self-attention is forgotten, devotion is self-evident. And when self-attention is not forgotten, the lack of devotion is absolutely obvious, like a pile of garbage. There is no mistaking one for the other. Beholding the spiritual master is the ancient walkabout way, spontaneously turning to, and thus and thereby, a whole bodily surrendering to, the divine in every moment the spiritual master is in sight. Having thus sighted the divine, you remain in that turning surrendering disposition and you would not and do not turn away from the spiritual master ever again. That is devotion. If you think you need to be occupied with self in life, and otherwise merely fit devotion in with all your ordinary occupations, you are justifying your own bondage. Divine, divine beholding is the only worth of life. There is nothing else of worth in life, nothing. That which is perfectly sufficient in is what life is about. In and of itself, life is not sufficient. In and of itself, Life is merely a point of view illusion, a set of suffered limits within which mortality reigns. Reality itself is the context of life. When reality itself, which is self-evidently divine, is located, beheld moment to moment, there is the intrinsic transcending of all that life otherwise might appear in and of itself to be. In that case, life no longer has power to bind or delude. In that case, life is not mere suffering anymore because it is not a something in and of itself. In that case, life is simply the context of divine beholding. Such is the nature of right and true devotional recognition response to me. Right and true devotion to me cannot be sold to egos. Right and true devotion to me has nothing to do with the ego, but it has everything to do with me, as I am. The exercise of self-attention is the absence of divine beholding. Divine beholding is the essential context of right life. Right life is not merely a matter of prescribed behaviours. Rather, right life is the right context of life. Right life is the context of divine beholding based on rightly and truly devotionally recognising the divine in person, the divine manifesting itself as it is and in plain sight. The divine moves you to turn the faculties to itself. The divine is not an it object. The divine is me, my very and absolutely divinely avatarically self-revealed person and state. You are given the gift of my divine avataric incarnation of the divine state so that you can rightly and truly devotionally recognise the divine in and as my person and have this 
my divine avatalic body human vehicle be the root focus of the psychophysical faculties. In that turning you can be combined with my very and intrinsically egoless state, not merely my physical appearance as a thing in and of itself. My divine avataric incarnation here is the profoundest of divine gifts. My divine avataric incarnation here is the perfect gift of reality itself. I am the divine gift that is the divine itself. And if I am rightly and truly recognised as I am, I am perfectly known as that which is divine and all-sufficient. That is why I say that in the reality way of Aditam, realisation is given from the beginning. In the reality way of Adidam, realisation is not sought. In the reality way of Adidam, realisation is not caused. In the reality way of Adidam, realisation does not come only at the end. In the reality way of Adidam, realisation is given from the beginning. In the reality way of Adidam, self-realisation of reality itself is in the recognition response to me as I am, and the divine beholding of me as I am, on sight, moment to moment. When whole bodily turning to me in right and truly responsive devotion recognition of me as I am, goes on as a moment to moment practice of divine beholding, that is radical devotion to me. Perfect obedience to me is to simply follow my instructions about right life, implicitly, explicitly and altogether, in response to fulfilment of my gift of divine beholding. And divine beholding of me as I am, in a comprehensive right life context of moment to moment, whole bodily devotional communion with me, is perfect knowledge, both as a preliminary listening practice and as an eventual perfect practice. Thus, my divine avataric gifts are given from the beginning of the reality of Adidam in and as my own person. However, if you merely objectify me, and thus and thereby refuse to know me as I am, my gifts cannot be accepted and received by you. You must rightly and truly devotionally recognise me as I am, and be whole bodily turned to me as I am, in moment-to-moment -moment divine beholding of me. Only in that case are you combined with that which is all-sufficient, that which is divine, the egoless, non-separate, indivisible, and self-evidently divine self-nature, self-condition, and self-state of reality itself. In the devotional context of divine beholding of me as I am, you are moved to responsively embrace right life and recognition enabled to engage a preliminary listening practice and eventually all and eventually the perfect practice of perfect knowledge. Nevertheless, the preliminary listening practice of perfect knowledge is not a technique or a self-applied seeking method for causing the self-realization and the perfect practice of perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge itself beginning with its only by me revealed and given preliminary listening practice, is always only the by me self-manifested revelation contemplation of what is self-evidently the case in every moment of divine beholding of me as I am. I am the all-sufficient sight. My true devotees perfectly know that. Therefore, my true devotees do not focus in self-attention. My true devotees cease to carry on the pattern of destiny of point of view in space-time. All of that is purified in the divine beholding of me. Right and true devotional beholding of me is searchless, selfless and self-evidently divine. The divine beholding of me does not disabled, en disable anyone relative to the natural functions of living existence. Not at all. Rather, the divine beholding of me makes all of life a context of divine fullness. In due course, all is purified, transformed and ultimately translated into the perfect domain that is conscious light itself, in which there is no separate anything or anyone. 
such is the intrinsic and self-evidently divine domain of all existence. The divine subdomain is not merely a heaven somewhere else. The divine subdomain is not located in time and space. The divine subdomain is a transcendental spiritual context of all of time and space, all at once. In the perfect fulfilment of the divine avataric reality way of Adidam, divine translation is a necessary and inevitable event in which the entire cosmic domain is perfectly outshined. Thus, most ultimately, divine beholding of me outshines the world, and from the beginning, divine beholding of me outshines self. To rightly and truly practice the divine avataric reality way of Adidam is to live on the basis of moment-to-moment -moment divine beholding of me, cited in my bodily human divine avataric incarnation form, and devotionally recognised as I am. To practice the reality way of Adidam is not itself and necessarily a matter of becoming some kind of recluse. To practice the reality way of Adidam is not itself and necessarily about any kind of mere change of circumstance. Rather, to practice the reality way of Adidam is to be transformed in place, in the ordinary context of your human doings. The only by me be divinely avatarically revealed and given reality way of Adidam is the way of the divine beholding of me as I am, which is my avatarically incarnate divine and egoless and indivisible self-state here self-manifested, and now, and forever hereafter, shown in plain sight by my divine avatarly bodily human incarnation form. The right and true devotional sighting of my divine avatarly bodily human incarnation form will now, and forever hereafter, give all those who rightly and truly devotionally recognise me, and whole bodily turn to me, always immediate access to the divine self domain, moment to moment, and from the beginning of their right and true practice of the only by me divinely, avatarically self-revealed reality way of Adidam. From the from that beginning, my true devotee participates. My true devotees participate in the process that that is purifying, transforming, and altogether enlightening, such that most ultimately. All in all is outshined, and only the divine subdomain is eternally self-evident as one and indivisible conscious light. The divine subdomain, the very context and condition that is, is reality itself, is unknown and unknowable to any point of view. Therefore, all points of view must become a turning to me, and in that turning to me, which is divine beholding of me, there is perfect knowledge and inherent divine liberation. Such is the perfect divine process divinely avatarically self-revealed and given by me, which is enacted in and by the divine beholding of me as I am, from the very moment of the right and true beginning of the only by me and only as me, revealed and given radical or always at the root, reality way of Ali Dam, or Adidam Vishira Dam. Da. Da. Da.